Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we're back with another live stream of Hearthstone. Today is Friday, October 19th. We're starting incredibly late. Uh, you know what? I, I think I just gotta own it at this point. Like, my insomnia just puts me basically in hibernation for fall. I've called it seasonal affective disorder, and, and probably it is, uh, but... You know, I'm I'm doing work. Uh, I'm actually pre-recording footage for the end of the year stuff, but I am falling asleep at eight, nine, ten in the morning, sleeping for twelve hours, and then waking up way late in the evening. Maybe my live streams should always be late in the evening. That's an interesting idea. Uh, I guess it really just is. A matter of following the viewers uh, the few viewers I can get but like I wouldn't be super upset if this really did start somewhere closer to 7 in the evening the problem though is doing Hearthstone you can a four hour stream or a three hour stream can turn into an eight hour stream pretty quickly and then that's too late for most people so yeah I'm not happy with myself <laughs> Clearly, I'm sure other people aren't happy with me. Uh, on other news, I have been given access to the YouTube Premieres feature, which is a new feature where it basically you're scheduling and trying to encourage more people to play... Um, to specifically watch pre-recorded footage at the same time. I... If I turn it on on all of my videos, you're, there would be roughly three, four premiere notifications every single day. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I only do it for the first episode in the series. Um, the idea, or at least how YouTube is selling premieres, is is the idea that the cre content creator would be in the chat interacting with people as the premiere is happening for me personally i could never really commit to that and honestly i don't know if any many very many content creators could agree to that um well, i was in a weird position here where i don't think i logged in enough and traded daily quests so this is what i get this 350 gold quest hunter class cards druid class cards shaman class cards as for the tavern ball that's still done as for the arena i'm not gonna buy another run in the arena so we can just jump jump into a game i suppose so yeah i don't know on the other hand maybe i should just turn premieres on every single episode because most pre-recorded episodes right now are getting zero views. The, the slight danger there is that people would unsubscribe and I'd lose my 300, uh, almost slightly less than 300 subscriptions because people would get more notifications. Although, that's such an insignificantly small audience according to YouTube anyways I I might as well just turn on premieres for everything um, it's it's weird when YouTube gives you an option like this is like do you want to be kind do you want to do what what I personally think would be the right way to advertise without getting in your face or do you want to go the route of the sleaziest advertiser who probably gets more sales than you by just flooding the market I can very well believe that by the time they're done experimenting with premieres they put some kind of limitation on it or uh, only give it to the best of the best youtubers anyways but I guess I should just take advantage of it now so yeah my channel might get really annoying starting at the new year I am pretty much not going to schedule it maybe I'll do it for the end of the year content uh, but that's kind of it. Uh, it seems a little weird too to do premieres because in, in all actuality, if the content creator is going to still be there, 
uh, then you might as well be live streaming for what I do. Like, it only makes sense if somebody is doing content that requires either a lot of animation or editing or cutaways or, or music modification or something. Like, you, you really would have to have a, a very edited video product to, to ha have to pre-record it and then do a premiere. And in all honesty, at any point, you could have always had an edited product and then just hit play. Like right now, could just be a video of me playing Hearthstone from several hours ago, and it isn't, but it could be, could have been and nobody would know the difference as long as there's somebody talking in the chat and somebody uh, somewhat communicating. But s since I suppose Twitch included their premiere product earlier, this is just YouTube uh, matching it beat for beat. They really probably don't care about premieres at all and wouldn't have added it in any other way. Let's start going through the news. Uh, we have a decent amount of them. I guess it's, it's once again, I screwed up, so I need to admit that. Um, uh, the way I have it set up, and I cannot figure out a way to not have it set up this way, uh, is just going to require me to do the web... If I want to do the web peak, which I do want to get it to work at least once, darn it, because uh, uh, it didn't work last time, uh, it worked slightly differently last time and I guess that's why even though there were people on the chat nobody bothered to complain in the chat uh, I had it set up so it was accidentally grabbing the first screen the which is Hearthstone so when I did the web peek it would put blue in the corners and the chat is in the lower left it's supposed to be in the lower left hand corner I wasn't even checking that and then the rules, and then Hearthstone down there. So, a much better screw up in that instance, uh, because even though I wasn't showing the web peak feature, at least I wasn't also blocking, significantly blocking the view of Hearthstone. Uh, but that's definitely not what I was going for, and apparently nobody cared or or realize that, that it was broken. So theoretically, I'm not even gonna promise it's fixed now, but it it's fixed in a way where I'm gonna have to basically double check the setting every single time I stream and just double check to make sure it's grabbing the second monitor because what happens is I disable the second monitor when I'm playing, uh, playing other games uh, because I don't wanna put any extra processing power uh, on my graphics card. I assume, I'm not 100% sure this is actually true, but one would assume that, uh, let's see, summon an animal companion or two if your deck has no minions. Interesting. I don't see how that could happen though. If your deck has no minions. If your deck has no minions. Why would I have a deck? Like, with no minions. What does this do? Um, so what was I talking about? Yeah. The web peak. Maybe not worth the effort. But, but I do think it will be a cool feature, and I've, I've invested in it, it just... I'm gonna have to be really careful to make sure it works every every time I do it. Uh, and, yeah, I just, in general, don't... Don't want the... Yeah, I, I don't want both monitors enabled on my graphics card when I'm playing a game. Now, 
I suppose for a while here, as I'm doing the wishlist recording, uh, I can leave the monitors both enabled because the wishlist involves having two monitors enabled too, and that's not a big deal when you're just looking at web pages. Um, I am now through the letter C's as far as going through my entire wishlist and doing cleanup. It's going moderately well, I would say, but not amazingly good. Uh, because I, for the most part, don't have terrible taste and don't put other garbage on the wishlist, that really has just kept the wishlist, for the most part, empty of anything that is just obviously a game that should have been removed. Uh, which means for roughly three and a half hours is what we're about averaging. I'm finding maybe 10 games to remove from the wish list and maybe five games to put at the top of the wish list because I'm really interested in playing those games. Uh, which makes it slightly questionable how we would do this uh, next year. I think I think there, there are some thoughts I've had, but I, nothing has felt amazingly like the right move. Uh, I've thought about perhaps doing a slight alteration of the end of the year cleanup so that we do two, two letters per month. If, the, if I was going to commit to that, then, I, then in January I'd need to go back and do like the numbers and symbols uh, and, and then February do uh, B and C and like th that's a thought that, that would break it up a little bit. Um, How long can this go on? Although that just doesn't feel like the th thematically like the way I'd like to do it. Maybe I could filter games out some, but I, I don't see a reason for doing that either. The only real way I can get my wishlist smaller after this wishlist clip into the year wishlist cleanup is honestly to, to commit to buying a lot of games probably more games than I need to to buy a bit compared to what I'll actually play. Hell drove this guy crazy by doing this. Okay, let's look at this first game. It feels like what has happened here is Steam has decided to uh, that they, they have decided to go a route of only approving the sex games or the games with nudity in them once a week or maybe oh, once every couple of weeks twice. even um, because there are a lot out today. Um, if they were going to kind of commit to some kind of internal schedule, they never actually admit to to existing. Uh, that that's probably an efficient way for the system to work, but it it is also going to be slightly a weird experience. Let's see. So, first game we have on Steam is called Eternal Fantasy, a nudity sex, uh, nudity sexual content indie. This is not zoomed in enough, is it? Um, let's see. The zoom is totally wrong. There we go. That should be better, yeah. Uh, this is a Japanese and Chinese only game which is 
a little bit odd, certainly. You don't see a lot of this where the interface is only traditional Chinese and the subtitles is, is traditional Chinese, but the the full audio is Japanese. Either way, the English language is not supported, so that was a kind of pointless one for me to start with. Destroy a random minion. That was not the random minion I would have liked to have seen destroyed. I'm trying to play cards, so I guess I should have played this card at some point. Uh, next game we have on Steam is Hidden Animals, Photo Hunt, Seek and Find Games. Oh, by the way, tell me in the chat if you can't see this, see Steam pages right now. Um, the idea of finding animals as kind of a hidden object game is a slightly interesting idea. Uh, what's the price on this? A lot of hidden object games have been removed from my wish list. $2.54. You know, in a weird way, I kind of want this to go on the wish list to keep an eye on it. Uh, because while this has a what I would say is probably a low effort name the concept doesn't look terrible looks like it's a cell phone port probably is extremely short let's see yeah it seems like maybe there's only 25 scenes and then that is that uh, hmm I need to definitely be more picky about putting games on the wish list Two dollars and fifty-four cents is too much. There, yeah, the, this shouldn't come to the wish list. It would just get on there and get knocked off. Well, I did not realize I was at rank eighteen. Well, I'm gonna lose my eighteen rank. I was on a win streak, actually, and that's exactly what I said was gonna happen: is that we, um, we were gonna ruin the win streak as soon as I came back on Friday because I won't even remember that I was I was winning. Hmm. Rexa versus Jane. Uh Gimatsu has an article Toho Ginso Wander Reloaded coming to PC October twenty fifth. It's a Toho Project roguelike RPG from a company called Aqua Style. Let's I'll watch the trailer and see what it looks like as far as that um, there is a considerable considerable amount of RPGs that are still making it to the wish list I need to make a decision there like there, there's a lot that come to Jesus moments um, where that are gonna happen have to happen with the wish list uh, uh, or decision moments uh, I don't know why I've adopted that phrase <laughs> But th there's a lot of decision moments where I'm going to have to say, look, there's 50 RPGs on my wish list. There's no way I'm going to cover 50 RPGs over the course of my entire lifetime when so many of these RPGs are uh, incredibly, incredibly uh, long at minimum 60 hours, usually uh, hundred hours I need to need to remove all but the best um, of the best yeah this one that I'm looking at that's just been announced is it looks like it's for the most part just a dungeon crawler so yeah uh, what was this called to Toho Ginso Wander reloaded yeah that's not something that really interests me which is fine because it doesn't have a steam page out yet anyways but when it does I'll still not be interested let's go ahead and play this in the turn hmm. like this deck has a bunch of minions I think does it really not have any minions in it? Except for a couple? Spell, spell, weapon, spell, 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 beast. So if I could get the hunting, 
Hunting Mastiff removed. I bet I added this card and screwed up the strategy of this deck. Because <laughs> that, that is like literally the only, only one card. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and start attacking here in the face. <clears throat> Next game we have on Steam, Steam because I want to rush through this, is called Deliverance. It says it's a free-to-play racing game. This is probably an asset flip. Like, it looks relatively good. If this had come out several years ago, you would have thought, Oh yeah, this is a double A development game, uh, but now it's just so easy to make something like this and have very little uh, skill. Let's see, it's free to play early access, so I guess the price is right, but you can pretty much guess that this developer hasn't developed anything else that's interesting. Let's see, we have... A mixed reviewed game here. We have a positive DL early access game called Dead Army Full Radio Frequency. We have something called Command Co Manager Tycoon. Um, and it seems like like this game is from 2016 and it's still early access. That's that's a problem certainly. Like. Why don't people finish their projects? I hunt alone. Let's see. I don't think I'm gonna get away with uh, getting through all the news super fast, though. Like that, that would be very odd if I somehow got through all the news and daily quests was still needed to be done. Uh, right. Uh, Game of Sutra has another cool Rockstar Games clocks an average employee's work week at 42 to 45 hours, which is still overtime, but uh, not an incredible amount of overtime. Uh, of course, you could play with averages there too. You could have an employees that work one hour a week, and then you could have employees that are working hundred hour weeks, uh, and that still would potentially average to about the same. And so, I literally cannot play this strategy until this one, like the one animal here. Until I draw this, and then the strategy starts to work. Stop copying me! Hmm. So, Rockstar has been basically trying to backpedal on their 100 hour work weeks comments for a week now. People certainly are upset with the concept. Arguably, maybe they're taking it out on the wrong person. Um, sometimes in these sort of political ideologies and ways of thinking, you, you wonder if what you're seeing is an actual, uh, oh, what's, how's the way to say this? Are you seeing an actual natural occurrence of a conversation or are you seeing a staged crisis? Like, uh, I hate to use the phrase crisis actors, but I mean, I wouldn't be 100% surprised if it turns out that Rockstar, the person who said 100 hour uh, work weeks from Rockstar, was asked specifically to say that, to bring up the conversation, then to ask, act as the straw man that could then be yelled at and uh, come back and say, you know what, we'll, you're right, I was wrong. We, I should have never said that, that and we, we were going to do better. Like, in the same way that the, if there ever is a liberal or progressive on Fox News, they are 
inherently a complete and total idiot and are not allowed or capable of making a cogent argument or a realistic argument and they're just there to be beat up on in the same way that if there is ever a conservative or right-wing person on cnn they're there to be the idiot to be beat up on and and never allowed to make a, a cogent argument even if the the even if they were capable of making one. Um, so for as much as the story has been over covered which it really really has like we we generally i would say all humans need to get away from from listening to news stations that are taking a single slip of the tongue or a same single statement and then expanding it into what has now been it feels like two weeks of uh, just constantly um well constantly bringing up and talking about this issue um, when it really doesn't sound like Rockstar is too much the problem. Unless there is a bigger underlying problem. And if there was a bigger underlying problem, then why aren't we getting that? See, the thing here is if somebody had said 100 hour work weeks and they, there was a disgruntled employee out there uh, at Rockstar, they could have come on, gone on Twitter and said, uh, it just starts at the 100 hour work weeks uh, it, it just gets worse from there uh, in my capacity at working at the job I I I was harassed I was underpaid I was overworked I mean there, whatever the complaint would have would be I hunt alone. you would think somebody else would come out with more of a complaint it, when you see these articles that just kind of are focusing on one aspect that feels like it's tiny and insignificant and it and there's no collaborating incidents it, like it, this feels a lot like a fabricated story or sensationalized story and not not something that really needed to been talked about for that long Moving on, GameIndustry.biz has an article, PlayStation delays days gone, the zombie thorough slips from February to April to avoid clash with Anthem and Metroid Exodus. So we basically have been getting told for a while now that uh, uh, that we were going to get an incredible amount of games near the end of this year, beginning of next year, and now the other shoe drops. I mean, when we look, uh, when I think back to E3 and just how many games were announced this year and how competitive the, the release schedule seemed like it was going to be, it was pretty, pretty overfull. And now we're having the other shoe drop and games are just getting delayed and it was kind of obvious that that was going to happen too. Um, there certainly have been some games that probably could have been cancelled or delayed a lot further. I'm a little surprised games like The Quiet Man didn't get cancelled or pushed further. I'm a little surprised that the Microsoft uh, Pirate game didn't get cancelled or left in early access for a little bit longer. Uh, we're still in kind of a weird position though because it is mostly just focused around first person shooter games and, and so I think probably this year would be a good year to, to realize hey not that many people are uh, while people do like first person shooters it, it may be at a point where we should start realizing that there is a level of people out there that also want other kinds of games. I hunt alone. I hunt alone. I don't know what to do. Still getting loose. Um, 
And of course, all the AAA developers can make these days are uh, first person shooters, so I don't know how they can feel the growing desire for other styles of games. I'm hoping that plays all the hunter cards I needed to play. Good. So now, hopefully, I can play a class that might win. Um, well, you know what we should do is we should learn a lesson here. Spell Hunter, take out this card. And I think literally that was the only beast. And put in a spell. Hmm. Let's see. For each time a beast, you play a beast this turn, man, a random beast to your hand, that would never happen. Hmm. Hmm. Play 7 1 cost minions, that would never happen. I'll just take a snake trap, I guess. So we'll make a slight modification to that deck so it actually works. Um, we now need to play either Druid or Shaman cards. I think we'll, I'd prefer to play Druid. I'm hoping the Druid will actually win. What it, would it be as far as Shaman if I were going to play the other ones? I don't think I want to play Murloc. It would be even Shaman. We'll try it. Gamer Citra has an article, get a job, Amnesia developer, Frictional Games is hiring for a tools programmer. This is in Malmo, uh, Sweden. Do you spell Sweden with two E's? I guess you do. Well, three E's. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Amnesia developer needs a lot of help to make a game that is a little bit more complicated. Considering how Amnesia is sort of just a walking horror, walking simulator game, uh, being while being chased by an enemy, I believe in Amnesia sometimes. Uh, so, I would like to see them take their success, whether deserved or not. I'd kind of argue they got very lucky. Uh, and make better games. I think Layers of Fear, the developer Layers of Fear, in the same way, should take their success. And uh, a lot of these horror games are getting success simply because YouTubers are streaming uh, their horror games. And I'd like to see them use that to make better games. Uh, but possibly not in the horror genre. Two damage to minion and overload. That one's immune from damage. That one's immune from damage. So I literally can't do anything. Alright, moving on. Let's see. This article is not important, so we can ignore that. We have a game on Steam called Cube Time, which looks like a simple sort of a one screen uh, unity game it looks a little bit like Catherine uh, this is sort of what the game uh, play of Catherine was with with less graphical interface I'm very confused as to why you would want or need to paint certain sides and surfaces hmm. Like, this kind of seems just kind of random. And looking at the screens, you have your very basic backgrounds of different colors. So this really would come down to, I guess, price. 59 cents uh, for it. In all honesty, though, I guess... I really cannot be in the business anymore of, of even considering to cover or play uh, bad games or games that are just short games. Uh, 
Like, that's just... As I've been going through the wish list for the end of the year cleanup, it, it, it's becoming more and more obvious. It's like, uh, doing a 30 minute spotlight on a 60 cents game that nobody is really probably ever going to be interested in playing doesn't make a lot of sense. Darn it. So yeah, that, that one can't make it to the wish list, clearly. It's kind of weird that every stream I kind of have to uh, remind myself what my level of quality is and, and be careful to not let it slow down or lower. Let's see. Two damage there. And this here. And this here. To do this. To do that. To do that. To do that. Now I may not be playing a ton of shaming cards here, but I am gonna get victories and I like that too. We have a GameIndustry.biz article, EA and Activision's $79 billion games as a service growth. DFC reports shows both publishers' values have surged since 2012 as they increase focus on live totals. So, as video game developers, they suck, and video game players hate them, but the investors love them, and inherently this is more of an argument again against the idea of letting investors exist period i guess in <laughs> stuff <laughs> like th th that's really what it just comes down to is that i feel like particularly in artistic ventures um the fact that people who only want to use a company to make money and well will inevitably try to do it in the sleaziest and dirtiest and most consumer unfriendly way possible should not be allowed to own shares in a corporation that is built around the idea of making entertainment or art and i look at video games as more art than even entertainment i guess i could go down further in this article but there's really not a lot to see here. Games of services won't 100% ever die, but we are already starting to see the beginning of uh, a backlash of against games like that. Games with microtransactions are games of services, uh, for example. Uh, let's see. Next game we have on Steam is called Death Trader Cold War, which looks like it's a strategy game of some sort. Doesn't look terrible. The interface might be a little black and dull. Anytime I see a game based around a map, I'm kind of reminded of Plague Inc. Evolved. Let's see, can't do anything this turn, so let's go ahead and under turn. Um, let's see, it's an early access game, it's $5.59, this developer, have they made anything else? Let's see, yeah, they've made some other games, so, this one was mixed, this one is negative, this one is mixed, this one's negative, this one doesn't have any reviews. That one doesn't have enough reviews. Well, you can see this developer has made just a bunch of really bad games. So, yeah. No... When, when you have even one or two bad games under your belt, that's well, a game you're... That's not probably a game not worth putting on a wish list. But when you have three or four under your belt that are bad, you might as well change your name. Like, you might as well start your company over again. I, I'd be more willing to play a game that from a company that hadn't made anything new at all. 
right, let's deal two damage and hope this works. That's really my only hope. Come on, hit him. Hit him, hit him, and oh darn it. Well, this guy's gonna die anyway, so I'll do that. Okay, next game we have on Steam is called Battle for Gaming, which looks like it's probably a low effort game. The graphics don't look great. It's an interesting idea as a concept, having seven guns around you, uh, but this really seems like it's just you're shooting money at red bricks. Like, this feels like a game that's probably trying to pretend like it's making some kind of political statement or video game statement in general, maybe not a political statement, uh, but really it just looks awful. Early access, six dollars and fifteen cents. Yeah, I would not be pay. I would not pay six dollars and fifteen cents for this game. And I don't need to look at the developer and see if they made any other games. That when I can tell from the game I'm looking at, I don't want it. Let's, let's see. Attack here, then do this. Then in return. Whoops. Um, we have I think we probably already talked about this article, but Variety has this article. Nearly half of all power gamers are parents, a third are women, so it says st study. Uh, this is the modern gamer study by the company Fullscreen, which I believe owns Rooster Teeth, so it's kind of uh, in a potentially biased re release, so just to be fair. Uh, I'm not going to cover it too much here. Uh, if it is true that half of all gamers are parents, that, that makes sense. Uh, depending on how you define yourself as a power gamer. Uh, I believe the study defined power gamers as people who played 10 plus hours a week on PCs or consoles. Uh, so, yeah. All it really kind of goes to disprove, I guess, is the study disproves the idea that there is a considerable amount of out-of-school, out-of-college aged people who are playing lots and lots of video games and doing nothing else with their life. Uh, the average human being does more than one thing and is not super obsessive. Now. Ironically, a video game critic and a YouTuber who, who, made their, who made their entire YouTube channel and career out of playing video games probably doesn't fall into the average category, and thus I do play a lot more than 10 hours a week, certainly. And honestly, my life balance is not inherently very balanced, uh, while I'll occasionally do something with like building a Raspberry Pi or programming it or do some Legos or uh, watch movies on Netflix or TV shows on Netflix or um, just watch movies in general. Uh, the vast majority of, of my career <laughs> is video games and it always has been though too. So I've always been an outlier. I've always played way more than 10 hours of games a week. Uh, It's probably, it's definitely not for everybody. Let's see, moving on. Next we have a game called The Unlikely Legend of Rusty Pup. This looks like an, it says it's an indie strategy game. It looks a little bit nicely animated here. Uh, but I'm a little uncertain what kind of gameplay it is. It looks to me like a point-and-click like adventure. But they're, they're sticking away from the point-and-click thing. Which might be the right move, frankly. This is $14.99. This one's got to go to the wish wishlist. Um, 
Yeah, first game from this developer. I gotta put this one on the wish list just to see how people review it. Um, let's see, elemental. Do this. And do this. No. I screwed up. Uh. Um. Yeah. It's a pretty quick decision to, to put this game, the unlikely Legend of Rusty Cup, on the wish list, but. My wish list, I wish I had two, honestly. I, I wish there was one where I could put brand new games that came out in 2019 and 2018, and then at the end of 2019, I can. Ooh, well, I just closed it, so I guess I have to unclose it. What to do? Uh, what to do? That. But yeah, you get into to a weird point there where where there are games I just want to have on what would be a watch list, and and there's a slight slight difference there. Uh, I guess inherently I could start following new games, and then next year the following uh, cleanup list would be a lot easier. I guess that's really how it should be done, come to think of it. Um, but I need to put all the new games on the follow list, and at the end of next year, I need to only have things that I'm follow- uh, only go through the follow list. Uh, unfortunately, what that would mean is the few VR games I have on the follow list would fall back into getting evaluated again. But it still would make the like the wish list and the cleanup a lot quicker, and it would in part be an effective abandonment of of trying to clean up the wish list anymore. Um, which I might be cool with. Truth is my shield. Okay, so what do I want to do? do it. Get rid of that attack here. I'm to... hmm. Yeah, I think that is a much smarter move. Just looking at the watch list. Uh, because, in all honesty, I wanted every video for the end of the year cleanup to probably only be about an hour. Uh, to, to have was effectively 27, maybe even a slightly more of videos talking about games. It's too much. Put this apple on your head. Right. Let's see. Next game we have on Steam is called the Watson Scott Test. It's a violent atmospheric horror psychological horror game, it says. Still don't feel like these are zoomed in right. Take the Watson Scott personality test and discover your deepest, darkest fears. Study multiple question choice questions will tell if you're afraid of clowns, snakes, or something more sinister. I wonder if this is a real test or if this is just a made up thing. Clearly, though, the vast majority of this game is just showing, uh, showing you, uh, questions. Hmm. There was a game that did personality surveys and adjusted this game, uh, play to be scarier based on those surveys. This wants $4.34 for this game. That's basically a text game. No, thank you. Amazing. Hmm. Break yourself up on my body. There we go. 
know. I want to play this Amazing. before I end the turn. Science so yeah, the Watson the Scott test, not a game Science making it to, I guess, the follow list going forward. Yep. This is a very, very iterative process as it's going right now. I'm trying to figure out the best way, the most efficient way to... to get things done and make content and also do some background uh, paperwork uh, so many youtubers and I am not an exclusion complain about hey there's a lot of work that gets done in the background and and it's true uh, now arguably a lot of it could be handed off to somebody else if you were making enough money uh, and honestly, if I was making enough money where I could even pay somebody a minimum wage uh, hourly uh, jobs, I, w I would hand off a considerable amount of the work I do uh, before I even paid myself. Um, I think that would probably be the more efficient way. Uh, of course, right we now, on YouTube is not getting sorry. anything, so zero... You can get a you could get a hundred percent slice of a zero cent a zero dollar pie and you're still gonna starve to death. Uh, that's a weird saying I just potentially made up. Hmm. Uh, Gametto is an article, Catherine full body DLC, ideal voice set adds Megumi Toyo Toyoguchi. Uh, not sure if... Hmm. The eighth voice actor option for to voice Catherine and Catherine full body is Megumi Toyoji. So there's apparently several different voice actors who have voiced that they paid to record uh, I do not have a full understanding why you would do that I, I know in Japan they, they love their voice actors and actresses mostly voice actresses I'd say more than the actors previously announced voice options included uh, the original Catherine voice actor Miyuki Sawashiro, Mamamiko Noto, Ami Koshi Mizu, Ayo Yuki, Yui Horil, Hori, uh, Kana Asumi, and Haruka Tematsu. Hmm. So. So those must all be different voice actors that voice different characters. Yeah, that would make a lot more sense than what I was originally thinking, that they had eight different people voicing just the character of Catherine. And I, I kind of get the, the idea that maybe there'd be two voice actors that voiced the same character, uh, since it's kind of a weird psychological game. Hmm. So, uh, this is a Gamatsu weird article, certainly. This is very Japanese, and we're going to slowly get, gain attention by stretching out announcements and announcing every little bit of detail and getting press for it, uh, which works in Japan. Uh, in the rest of the world, we don't, generally don't print not news like this. Uh, mainly. It's just not really actionable news. That's that's a phrase I haven't used in a while. Like, okay, we know who the voice actress is in the Japanese version. If you are Japanese and recognize that voice actress's name and you are in love with her and obsessed with her, you're, you're in good standing then, I suppose. And otherwise, you probably don't care at all. Let's see. Moving on, we have a GameIndustry.biz article. One hour, 100 hour weeks means bad management, not passion. Rockstar m may not be the hell it's been portrayed as, but we need to stop lionizing 
long over time and start seeing it as a shameful sign of failure. So this is basically an editorial. I mean, I don't know how you really you could break it down with statistics and or study or anything to, to prove that. I totally 100% agree. Uh, as, as somebody who worked a job with terrible management that had incredibly large amounts of overtime for uh, an incredibly long amount of time. Yeah, I, I fully agree with the sentiment. But then it does certainly get back into the idea of like, was the, you're just continuing with the story over and over again uh, and talking about it. But maybe that's what needs to happen. Like, it, it is a much better story to bring up when it naturally comes up than the previous arguments where you had, what was her name, Joanna Rice insulting the customers and, and then claiming sexism when she got fired for being incredibly rude on Twitter to customers. Um, uh, or when the story came out and somebody claimed that they would talk over her in a meeting and that the whole company was sexist because of that. Uh, that story at least evolved to a point where there were some better, more legitimate complaints made, but it, they weren't actually made until like five weeks after the original story came out and had been talked about to death. Uh, let's see. So, I would gladly trade getting a story once a week about overtime and how the video game industry is like abusing its developers than I would hearing stories about how every single company needs to have 50% or more of their employees be female or minorities or uh, just to meet quotas uh, there, there is certainly an issue still of a lot of people out there are working a lot harder jobs a lot longer than, than programming but everybody's needs need to be addressed eventually or should be addressed but it's hard to continue to report on the same story over and over again so it, for me it really is gonna have to just it's gonna have to come down to something like well we've got another article about overtime it's not really saying anything new uh, it's been forever known that that you people were getting overworked on in the video game industry there we go. my shield for Argon. this will be the last game for this recording we have a game on Steam called Little Elf. Elf. This is a simple casual game that throws a game of chess. Or I imagine this is supposed to say chance. This does not look like a game of chess in any way. It looks like um, an anime style version of a board game that I always remember, forget the name of. Um, let's see. It says it supports quite a lot of languages, basically all the languages. <laughs> uh, let's see, forty percent off for fifty-nine cents. There's no reason why this would, this game would make it to uh, my wish list. And we have a developer who's put about four games on Steam, and well, three games, and none of them have been reviewed um, enough to make sense. Now, Steam's review system is also slightly in question because uh, there definitely have been some games I've I've seen in, as I'm looking on my wish list that 
have like 65 reviews but only eight are counting because it was a Kickstarter game and most of the people got a key through the Kickstarter campaign and thus they didn't buy it directly through Steam thus their reviews don't really count and usually their, their reviews are negative when that happens anyway so and, and I only particularly consider care about the negative reviews of games uh, if a game is reviewed highly by somebody that's usually not information that helps until I see roughly 10 to 20 positive reviews to counteract one negative review. Gamatsu has an article, uh, the game Concrete has been delayed to spring 2019. It's no longer planned for 2018. Pretty much you can guess, unless there's a hard release date, uh, there's a, there's about a month, I would say. If if you don't get a hard release date for a game by the time uh, Thanksgiving happens in the United States, November 25th, I believe is Thanksgiving. Uh, I should know that. Uh, if you don't get a hard release date by that time, your game is going to be delayed. Concrete, in particular, looked kind of like an artsy game that had a weird, questionable gameplay style. So if we got a delay and got some improvements, that'd be great. I think it's a Sony exclusive anyway, so I'm probably never going to play it. Um, yeah, it's coming out just for the PS4. So, not not a big thing. Oh, it, the game is called Concrete Genie, not just Concrete. I misread. Apologies. Falling asleep. Just woke up falling asleep. Probably gonna win this. Warriors of the frozen wastes. Uh, we already talked about it, but Days Gone. Gamatsu has the article Days Gone delayed to April 26th. So, two games, both of which are Sony games, have been delayed. It's, it's funny, uh, Sony was not really in a great position to delay Sinrin Kagura, and. But, but that was just the Western release of Sinrin Kagura of the latest Sinrin Kagura game. Uh, but if, if they were going to have to delay two other games, they, they, they probably could have used the help. Uh, I suppose, theoretically, all I need to do is summon a character and get this guy to attack this guy instead of this guy. Let's see, Gamatsu has an article, the game Egress, E-G-R-E-S-S, -E -S, which I think means exit, uh, launches via Steam Early Access on November 8th, PS4 and Xbox One early 2019. It's a heroes based player versus player arena game. Let's see, it has a Steam page, let's watch the, the trailer. Like, I, I seriously doubt, though, that, like, I mean, yeah, I guess you really don't know. You, you really never know if, what the next big thing is going to be. They're showing me a trailer talking about something called the piñata mode. And that was all the trailer showed was a cannon and, and a pinata. Let's see, let's go over to there. They say it's Lovecraftian in the tags. And yeah, it seems like players are running around a dark city and it says water will rise pretty soon so it seems like maybe the maps flood throughout the course of the gameplay uh, being in the city area though you run into issues what the character uh, 
stepped in the water and gained some kind of s something that looked like a poison effect that slowly d uh, dissolved. Hmm. Hmm. This game does not look very fast paced Put this apple on or your fun. Head. Looks like ass looting and chest chests that you try and collect. I'm not seeing it. people fight each other. Okay, finally somebody just appeared. And it's like one player fighting the other player from the distance. Doing a lot of jumping and rolling. The unravels. Let's see. This game, Egress, does not look interesting at all. It's just too dark. It's beyond anything else. It's supposed to be coming out November 8th. I've heard nobody talk about it. It's from a developer who made a game that was mixed reviewed uh, previously in 2016 called Beastarium. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's just another attempt at somebody to make a game that would catch people's attention. Like, I bet Egress is the next Battleborn as far as games that... Alright, let's do this. Uh, that didn't work too well. Job done. Welcome to my I should journey. lose in this turn, so that should be the end of this. Aha! Put this apple on your head. He has enough to win. I don't want him to toy with me. It'd be funny if he if he actually accidentally killed himself. But that was not likely to happen. Well we're still sticking somewhere close around rank 18, which is better than anything else. And in an hour of streaming, no. Questionable, maybe I should make these videos a little bit longer. Uh yeah, I just need to do druid cards next recording. Uh, maybe I should do an hour and 30 minute streams. Uh, it wouldn't really affect too much, honestly, and it would stop me from having such an incredibly backlog of videos. By the way, there was one video that did come out on Twitter and had the thumbnail, so I'm thinking what happened is there was a glitch months and months ago that nobody noticed in the in the algorithm and because of that uh, I literally just have to wait out the bug and it will fix itself uh, so hopefully by the time January runs around everything will be fixed uh, theoretically I guess um, everything should be fixed somewhere mid November Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below in the description box. And if you want to support me, you can friend me on Steam, gift me a game, or support me through Patreon. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.